So recently I've had a number of questions about EtherCAT communications, specifically SDO communications. So EtherCAT has two types of messaging. There are what are called PDO messages and then SDO messages, and they both serve different purposes. So let's take a look at what those are. Devices on the network have a number of parameters known as objects that can be accessed through EtherCAT. Some objects need to be updated every EtherCAT cycle, like commanded position or current velocity of a servo, whereas some are only accessed infrequently, like torque limits or position window settings. Objects that can be updated every EtherCAT cycle are known as process data objects, or PDOs. Objects are assigned to be PDOs in the PDO map during system setup, and then the controller and the device expect to send and receive those objects each cycle automatically. User manuals for EtherCAT devices will tell you if an object can or cannot be accessed as a PDO. Objects that are accessed infrequently are known as service data objects or SDOs, and these are accessed on an as-needed basis using specific read and write commands. And SDOs can make your system extremely agile because they allow you to make changes on the fly. They also allow you to do things like create parameter backup files, or even have parameter changes directly from the HMI. So you don't need to bring out another setup software to actually make device changes. So let's jump over to SysMac Studio and show how SDO communication works. This program has three rungs. The first rung contains structured text for initial variable setup on the first scan of the PLC. And then the two rungs after that contain the SDO read function block and the SDO write function block. Now both the read and write function blocks have inputs for node address and SDO objects. The node address is an unsigned integer that is set to the value of the EtherCAT node number, and I created a node address variable to use for both the read and write function blocks. Now in this project, I have a single 1S servo at node 1, which you can see specified up under the EtherCAT tree in the MultiView Explorer. So in my startup structure text block, I just assign 1 to the node address variable. The SDO object variable is a data structure of type underscore SSDO underscore access, which in this case I called my SDO object and used it for both the read and write function blocks. The data structure has three elements to it, an index number, a sub-index number, and then a Boolean element if you want to access all sub-indexes underneath that index. For this example, I'm going to read and write values to the positive torque limit setting in the drive. The table in the 1S manual shows the EtherCAT object for torque limit settings is 3330, and the sub-index for the positive torque limit setting is 3. So in my structure text block, I set the data structure elements of the my SDO object variable using the object address information from the manual. I set the index value to 3330, and these are hex values, so I have the 16 pound qualifier before the value to indicate that it's hex. I set the sub-index to 3, and since I'm only going to work with the positive torque limit setting and not all of the sub-indexes of index 3330, I set isComplete access to false. Where the read and write data function blocks separate is on the data. The read function block has an in-out variable for the read data, which holds the data that was read, and then an output to indicate the size of the data that was read in bytes. The write function block has a write data input for the value you want to write, and then also a write size, which tells the function block how many bytes you will write. The object table shows that the data type for the positive limit is unsigned 16-bit, so I set my read data and write data variables as unsigned integers, and I put initial values into the write data and write data bytes in the structured text block to have a starting point. Lastly, I created contacts to execute the function blocks, and I automatically execute the read function block after executing the write function block as a verification. So whether you're reading or writing, there are really only three things that you need to remember. You need a node address, you need an object address, and you need data. So let's go ahead and watch it in action. The default value for the positive torque limit setting is 5,000, so I'll execute the read, and there I can see 5,000 in read data. Now, my write data variable has 2,500 in it, so I'll go ahead and execute the write function block, which then also automatically executes the read function block, and now I can see the 2,500 in my read data. 
Sysmac Studio does have EtherCAT packet sniffers for troubleshooting, but another simple trick is to use the data trace tool. So here I have a data trace that's triggered by the execute bit of the write function block, and then I'm monitoring the busy bits of both the read and write function blocks and the read data variable. So I'll arm it, and I'll go ahead and enter a new value into the write data variable, execute it, and then let's go back and stop the trace. So you can see here the time it takes for the write function block to complete, the time it takes for the read function block to complete, and the read data value changing to my new value once the read function block is complete. So hopefully that takes the mystery out of SDO communications. They're nothing more than writing or reading to a specific address inside the device. So now if you have any other questions about SDO communications or the EtherCAT protocol, head on over to omron247.com to learn more.